play you something. This German is our enemy. Do you understand? <laughs> Why should I believe that you're any better than those men? I have nothing in common with these people. The only person I have something in common with is you. After the rawness and the impulsiveness of the characters in Bullhead and Rust and Bone and The Drop, was it a big part of the attraction in playing Bruno that he was so opposite to them and so controlled? Well, I think all of these characters that you just named or referred to, they all have similar... Basically, to me, all of these stories are love stories to some extent. It's about absence of, of love or need of love or or not understanding, or impossible love, or, or, or uh, forbidden love. It's all about love to some extent. And all of these characters have an ambiguous quality. And, um, and of course the context and the form might, might be different, but here again, um, Bruno to me is a very ambiguous character because of what he represents and how that doesn't align with who he truly is. And that, that was a challenge for me, is, is trying to dive into the soul of this character, which to me was truly an artist. Um, and, and, and so when I discovered that, I was really liberated because I was kind of anxious about, you know, what I was incarnating, you know, this, this diabolical symbol, um, part of this, this, this insane regime that caused so much harm and, and, and you know, and so I, I had moral issues with that. But then I read the book and, and, and it's through the eyes of the writer really that, that because of the love that she, you know, describes, that allowed me to love that character as well and, and to go for it. And um, so to come back to the ambiguous quality of the, of the character, it's the uniform does everything on that part. So I was like, okay, how can I counter that with something else? I don't have to do anything anymore because the uniform does it all. And so I'm like, okay, play the artist. He's an artist. He's a musician. He's someone looking for refinement. He's someone looking for beauty. And it's through that search for beauty that, you know, he connects with Lucille in the end, because it starts with the music. Uh, even if they haven't spoken a word, they connect straight up. And I think that is a very, very important kind of love that I think needs to be told and that people should be witnessing, because I think the word love is, is really ready for uh, redefinition, honestly if you look at it nowadays. Maybe that sounds overly dramatic, but when I say that, I don't mean that in a melodramatic way. I mean that in a profound way. I, I don't mean that in a syrupy way, like, oh, everybody. It's not a naive kind of love that I'm trying to, we had that in the 60s. We don't live in a society today that, that permits us to be naive. That's done, that time is over. But it's time to be conscious, and it's time to be conscious about the power of love. And the power of love, if, 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 if you look at it the right way, is the only undestructible thing in the world. Hate is not going to get you anywhere. Violence is not going to get you anywhere. Cynicism is not going to get you anywhere. Love will get you there. Love makes life worth living, and that's it, period. Wow, did that, that sound... Did I just I'm say sold. that? Did I just say I'm that? Sold. Yes, I did. It's a manifesto. Mm. Now, in terms... I remember someone saying to me a great saying years ago, they said, you know, people think they're saving other people, but really they're saving themselves. Do you think that's accurate for Bruno and Lucille? Well, basically that is, that's, that's exactly, it comes back to what I just said. True love is not egocentric, it's selfless, it's altruistic. And the decisions, the decisions that Bruno takes in the film, you, you, you can't really say he's making them for himself. He re really makes them for her. So that's right there. That's right there. But it's true what you say is that people have the tendency to, you know, indirectly do everything for themselves. You know, people are vampires to some extent. And, and, and that's why this story to me is so important because this is, this is the total opposite of that. In terms of roles and a sense of adventure, I've always thought that yourself and Michelle Williams are something of kindred spirits in terms of like not taking the easy roles or whatever. Mm. Did that become very apparent to you the first time you met and when you started working together? Well, well, obviously I respected her for the work she she had done. And then you meet each other, and of course it's in the beginning it's always kind of awkward, you know, it's you're filling each other out. And then in the end it's it's something happens naturally or it doesn't. 
and we got like instantly there was something playful that happened and 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 that was the seed of our very collaboration it was it, it was yeah we had fun we had fun and we're both very demanding and and we work hard and but but we have fun because if it's not fun then then what the hell are we doing? Then it's masochism. And I've been there as well. I've been in a masochistic kind of approach for certain things. But I realized that's not the way to go. That's well, not you, the way to go. You've both made me want to read the book anyway. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's a good thing. It's, it's, it's wonderful. And basically the film, it's, it's, it's like the last part of the book because there's, you know, you, you can't translate that entire story in, in, in a 90 minute film. That's impossible. So the director, made a choice to really focus on that very specific relationship. He's leading the search for my husband. For my dad! You're the only one that can help him. They think you're hiding someone. If I had the slightest suspicion, it would be my duty to act on it. Precious to you. It is precious to me.